all human beings, which appears similar to that, what we call Christ in you. <clears throat> but it's not. It's just being, it's what a lot of people call being a good Christian. Well, he's just a good Christian. What? You know, Jesus said there's none good but God. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, when I was a young Christian and I heard that, you know, the guy comes and says, good master. <clears throat> Jesus says there's none good but God. Well, Jesus is God. You know, good master means good rabbi. That's, that, that was, that's the true word in there. Good rabbi. He <clears throat> goes, there's none good but God. And folks, I mean, I'd look at that and go, well, what about us, you know? But then I realized that we're in Christ, you know, and that all that pertains to him pertains to us. Anyway, a person can be in a favorable environment pursuing something that demands public approval you know what I mean? You're in a good, you're in a good environment. You're in a, a nice, favorable environment. You're pursuing something that requires public approval, or at least you want public approval, um, <clears throat> or you have some other reason for appearing perfect, good, honest, or other qualities that make a person seem to have extreme integrity. Then, then Adam can act that way. Or, or let's just say Adam, or, or let's just say that other kind that's not Christ can do all of those things. But listen to this. However, with the change of circumstances or environment or options open to them that won't risk exposure, they, like all humans, will manifest a fallen nature. I'll read it again. However, with a change of circumstance, meaning things aren't so good now, you don't have the same reason to want to look good to everybody else. <clears throat> change of circumstance or environment or options are open to them that won't risk exposure. They, like all humans, will manifest a fallen nature. You know, it's like, there, folks, believe it or not, there are a lot of people who don't do bad things or go to bad places on the internet or go to bad places, you know, in the city because if they got found out, it would ruin their reputation or it would ruin their job or it would ruin their, you know, their view from their family or, you know, on and on and on. But all of those are based on pride. All of those are based on self-perception. And so they don't, you know, they don't. Um, <clears throat> you know, there are, this is, this is just a fact, not everybody knows it, but probably most of you do. I mean, like Google, anything you Google, they save that forever. They never, ever get rid of it. Anything that you've ever Googled, they save all the websites that you've ever been, and they can refer back. Not everybody does that, but Google for sure does that, okay? So someone knowing that would go, I gotta find another search engine or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, my deal is when I go on Google, I look for the strangest, you know, not, you know, like, alien UFO sites, and then I'll go over to, you know, uh, I won't, I can't even tell you all the words. I'll just do that just to mess with them. And they'll go, there is no pattern here. <laughs> this person is weird. <laughs> and they only go to these, one, these websites once, and then they find something else just totally. <laughs> Sorry, that's. Just pray for me. Just pray for me. <clears throat> All right. Um, and we, and uh, look at, turn with me to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14. 
Colossians 4 and 14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. All right. If you go through um, many of Paul's letters, you will find this man named Demas. And he's always there. I mean, he was one of the top guys listed with Paul. Okay. Always. All right. So you got that? That's uh, Colossians 4, 14. So he's even saying it here. And uh, Demas greets you. Now flip over with me to 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Second Timothy 4, 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Okay. So, over and over, this guy has been right there with the Apostle Paul. I mean, folks, I like reading the writings of Paul, but I can't even imagine traveling with him, watching him in the Word, sitting down with him at the you know, in a campfire that you've made on your way to somewhere, you know what I mean, and just hanging out, sharing the word of God, you know, and seeing where, you know, it's just like, whoa, you know. Well, Demas was one of those. He heard him preach. He was with him 24 hours a day. He's right there with him for years, and all of a sudden, he just leaves having loved the world, you know, forsaking me, having loved this present world. All right. How is that possible? Well, it's easy enough. He never got established in that as his kind. Okay? Now, we all, you know, we all, I'll say it like this, we're all one step from carnality. You know, I mean, we are. The, the difference is, is that we choose to, to make our focus Christ, we 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 um, are determined not to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. Not just Jesus as Savior or Jesus, you know. Uh, we are pursuing to the the reality of the Lord in the Word on our own, with all of our heart, <coughs> forsaking this present world, forsaking this, you know. Um, all of the ways of the world. And when we say the ways of the world, we automatically think of, you know, really sexual dressing clothes or this or that. Folks, you know, uh, you know, I could go off on a lot of stuff, you know. I mean, the most popular stuff right now is not even people relating. It's stuff on the web, how they relate, you know what I mean? And 99% of that's not the Lord. I mean, it's not. It's all about, some, you know, them you know, <laughs> keeping up with the, the people or whatever. And, you know, you, I've drawn the picture. You feed that enough, whether, and I'm not talking about the web, I'm talking about anything that is not hard pursuing after the Lord. I mean, we love that song, you know, as the deer panted for. I love singing it. When I sing it, I feel like my soul long as that. But what do I do when I leave church? Am I pursuing? As, am I like a deer? Am I going, man, I want the word. I want the Lord. I want to see Jesus. I don't want to be me. I don't want to just, I don't want that relationship. I don't want this activity. I want the Lord. Well, I can't answer that for you. <clears throat> But I can tell you from my heart, I'm doing my level best to know Jesus. I need the Lord. I want the Lord. And I'm not perfect in every way, but I tell you what, I try to squeeze everything out of my life that's not going to help me to reach the Lord. Now, you know, just when some of you were walking in today, I was up here playing the guitar. I like playing the guitar. I enjoy playing the guitar. I n almost never play at home, but I enjoyed that few minutes. I don't think that that was, you know, I should have been down here going, oh my God. So I'm not talking about being a fanatic in the, in the real negative way. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't cook or 
<laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, I'm trying to think of the way you would take it. If you could only take it the way I mean it, you wouldn't be <laughs> under condemnation or, or think I'm some sort of a weirdo. Yes. Yes. But that's not what you're saying. No. But but anything, the person puts anything to his own preference. Right. So, you know, a person is like, I'm resting the Lord, and if he's in, I have nothing to do right now, a lazy person would love to hear that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not about laziness, it's Christ. It's right. I think a good example of that is, you know, I don't do it much around here anymore, but I would lead worship and stuff like that, and, and, um, you know, unlike a true worship leader who leads everybody in, I just, man, I just go for the Lord when I'm leading worship and I just trust y'all are going to come on, you know, because I'm going, you know what I mean? I just want to be there with him. Uh, um, but I remember one time in Costa Rica, uh, I was uh, invited to minister in this church and, you know, you know, Doug Fisher, I mean, my God, he would take me to I forget how many, what the record was, but I mean, we hit probably 15 services in one Sunday. He just, just takes you everywhere. But anyway, we came into this one service. I'm sitting on the front row, and the, not the worship leader, but the guitar player that was playing up there, I mean, it was just like he was just trying to show off and show what he could do and show himself. It, you know, no question about it. I mean, he was just, he was oozing pride and look at me and look how good I'm just going oh my god you know you know I just kept hiding my face because it was just ugly you know or scary or funny or something I don't know it was just it wasn't Jesus you know and um, and I'm not trying to even put down that brother if he was here whatever I'm not trying to straighten somebody out as much as trying to say you know kind can have to do with just about anything you do whether it's cooking or playing or, you know, be of his kind when you do it. So, you know. All right. Uh, so even if appearance may convince you that someone is really good, it is the nature that is everything. And then I wrote in parentheses, or more importantly, it is God's view that matters. God's view, uh, no matter how hard we work at anything um, it's always good to check in anybody know what I'm talking about I mean some of us live pretty independent lives it's good to check in it's good to, I mean there's stuff that I've done man and I thought well I'm right on with this I mean it's happened more times than I'd like to admit you know, I'll, go, I'll be in a, a conference or something, and then the Lord will go, well, that's not really what I wanted you to share. And I'm going, I, th I thought, I mean, and as much as I knew how, I thought I got that from the Lord. You know, I mean, I really did. And he goes, here, I want you to share this. I'm going on in five minutes. <laughs> He's going, look, if it's me, it's going to be fine, you know. And uh, uh, it just drives you crazy. But if you don't check, guess what? You get up there and you share something that's not from the Lord. What good is that? I mean, do we really want to do that? <clears throat> All right. Uh, so my statement that I mentioned a couple of classes back, he sees through kind colored glasses. He, <clears throat> it's like if we looked from a satellite that had a good focus on the globe where we could see people running around, we'd see people running all over and da 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 and, we could see people doing this, and we could see people that are that color, and we could see people that are, you know, doing good things. We could see bad things, and we could see all this. None of that would clue us into kind, ultimately. None of it. God has to show you what he means by kind, not my talk. And if he doesn't do it, it's just, a, it's just like water over a rock. It's one more session of something I forgot. <laughs> <You know. clears throat> All right. All right, kind is different from personality. Because, you know, there are some... <laughs> well, 
I, I, we've got at least, those of you on Skype, we've got at least one person that was really thrilled with that statement. Kind is different than personality. Mallory goes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, kind has little to do with personality because uh, there are some people that are more amiable than others in their personality. Um, I sort of get a little bit of that feel with Paul when he didn't want Mark to be along with him, you know what I mean? And there was a kind of a dispute going on. But some people can look so, you know, in my 40 some odd years of ministry now, uh, I have seen some people that look so humble and people would say to me, oh, he's a real humble brother. Like, this is, you know. and. You know, I'd get around them and I'd go, this person is so proud about the fact that they're humble, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you, you could tell, it's just like, yes, I, I'm humble. <laughs> you're kind of going, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, no, you, you take, you, you uh, go through the door first. Look, buddy, just go, okay? You know, we're, we're looking for Jesus here, you know? It's like that story I tell of the man that they were at the awards banquet and, and he, uh, he won the award for being the most humble, and, but they had to take it away because he accepted the award. <laughs> That's not in my notes, by the way. <laughs> okay, um, so we want to talk about actions versus constitution, and I'm not talking about the... Constitution of the United States, talking about of what that you are constituted, of what kind that you are constituted. In God's eyes, a person's being is constituted by his nature. That's the way he, God marks it up like that. Your being is constituted by your nature. You can, you can be one way, well, let me just read a little more because there's stuff here. Regardless of how well he handles himself, he is constituted by his nature and not even by the activity of his nature um, because good displays can be you know, seen just as much as evil displays. <clears throat> True moral good, and when I say moral good, I'm not talking about a list of morals or morality and what we think but what is truly moral to God, and I don't know that I can even say it in words to describe that, but what is moral to God is not necessarily, you know, this perfect being, but it is that you're constituted right. If you're constituted right, if your constitution that's written in you is right, and you're constituted according to that, and that's Christ in you, then all the areas that have not yet conformed will be conformed. That it'll, it'll go because you'll keep going after Jesus. You see what I mean? But another person can look better than that. I always think of Romans 7, you know, and Paul. And Paul's going, you know, oh, wretched man that I am. And the thing that I would do good, I don't do. And the evil that I don't want to do, I do. I, now, picture, picture that man in your church. That's the key right there. Picture that man. And what would you think of that man? You'd go, this guy's a mess. God, well, he's, he's trying to do good and he never does it and he doesn't want to do evil and he's doing that and this guy's messed up and then somebody over here is going, oh, holy, 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 you know, and the churches Deb and I were part of, there was this guy <laughs> and he would fall asleep during the sermons and he'd be sitting there and he'd, he'd be leaning forward and the chair would be in front of him and what? one time he fell asleep and boom, bumped his head on the back of the chair and made a noise so everybody looked around at him and he goes, Oh, holy, 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 holy. <laughs> well, I could tell another one about another prayer meeting. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> but I won't tell that one because we love Mike. <laughs> and he was very young at the time, very young in the Lord. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, true moral good is the result of nature. But men may do moral acts and it not be according to their nature. Again, uh, 
because they want to look good or or it's going to get them somewhere if they do it this way or you understand what i mean it's it can be ambition it can be pride it can be all sorts of things but men doing moral acts does not constitute moral nature or kind or christ in you the hope of glory okay <clears throat> now i mean let's just let's just think of that 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 that'll shoot down a whole lot of religion and that will and if people really heard that it would make you want to seek after christ it would it would it would really focus things so that if if you were ever in Romans 7 you wouldn't care because you want jesus when I say you wouldn't care, you wouldn't care what people think. Well, you know, the good that I do, I don't do, and the evil that I say, I won't do, then I do. You'd, you'd go, you know, look, people. You might, probably wouldn't even say anything, but you'd just go, look, people. I want the Lord. He was in that situation strictly because he had a heart after God and was pressing after it. And somebody who wasn't never went through that dilemma. You know? Yeah, I was Right. It's I feel that that was the way with my own kids. I felt like, you know, me and Deb did our best to bring them up right, and to, you know, we we always tried to make it an issue not of good or evil, but of of Christ. But nonetheless, in child training. Child training, that's different than fully Christ. The child training, I think, you know, basically we did a good job. And then, you know, like, for example, Nisi, at a certain juncture in her life, she started getting after the Lord, not because, you know, she was good or evil. In fact, you know, she didn't hardly do anything bad. But because she wanted the Lord, on her own she did this, and she started pursuing to know the Lord, really getting in the Word. And she started seeing Jesus on her own. And I'll never forget the, you know, the day that, that she stood up and she says, you know, I now, I now serve Jesus because I've seen him, not because my parents do. And I just went, yeah. <laughs> because that's what I want for all of us. That's my greatest desire. You know, I, I'd be happy if nobody ever remembered anything about this guy or this place or anything. They just got Jesus, and they went away and just forgot any influence that was here. As long as you get Jesus, I'm going to be okay. If you don't, I'm falling apart. Anyway, yes. Yes, fear. Absolutely. Amen. All right, so we're talking about kind. Here is just a statement you need to realize. Ultimately, everybody's going to fulfill the law of their being. Shall I say it again? Ultimately, everyone is going to fulfill the law of their being, of your kind. You will. It'll come out sooner or later. You can only hold your breath for so long being good or <laughs> whatever. And it's going to show up. And and. That doesn't have to be a bad thing. You know, I mean, when, when it all came out of Paul there in Romans 7, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who? He didn't say what. He quit looking for a what, an answer apart from a who. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who? He needed a who in him. And so do we. We need a who. His name's Jesus. All right, but moral goodness should result from quality of nature. And when I say quality of nature, I'm talking about Christ in you. It's the quality of his nature, all right? So that means moral good. No longer are we under the old covenant, so moral good should be the result of Christ's life or the law of his nature as the law of us, the law of the spirit of life for those that are in Christ Jesus, set you free from that other law because you're no longer of that kind. There's been a, a death that's taken place. <clears throat> All right. Um, let me see here. I just really would like to make some progress. 
And that ain't going to happen, so we're not going to go to that scripture. <laughs> I'm just going to um, make a few statements. Moral law and somewhat obedience are two different things. Moral law is the, is the constitution of Christ. But you're not seeking ethics or morality. You're seeking the constitution of Christ, the nature of Christ to be formed in you. Uh, how did Peter put it? Becoming partakers of the divine nature. Partakers. Wow, of the divine nature. That's being reconstituted. I'm not talking about orange juice, Carolyn. I'm talking. <laughs> All right, so the hope is not found in a moral system. Can I get amen? All right, so if there was a president that came and he was a Christian and he set up all these new laws that were after the Bible and everything, and he said, everybody, we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, this, we're going to make this a Christian nation and everything, and we're going, to, we're going to make laws that will facilitate that. Would that really make us a Christian nation? <clears throat> no, of course not. It wouldn't. Okay, now get ready. Katie. I baited you. If Jesus, if Jesus came back and he sat on a throne on the earth and he said, okay, we're all going to be a Christian nation and here's, we're going to obey moral law and everything like that, would that make everybody moral? No, it wouldn't. It's the same thing as the other one. But, you know, but Brother Randy, how can you say that? That's what we're all hoping for. That's what we're all waiting for. That's the hope. No, that's not the hope. Christ in you is the hope. And if you uh, embrace Christ crucified, instead of all these other things, you, you go after it and you embrace him, then there will be a death to one kind and there will be a, an, an impartation of another kind in you. And then if he sets up on earth as a, uh, a, a king on a throne, the real thing that's going to make it tick, folks, is going to be his life within us. It's going to be him within us. Yes. Yes, dividing the sheep from the goats, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's what it says in Revelation, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, the, who has lamb life. And we always go, my name's written in the book of life. I, I, I know it's written in the book of life. We talk about the book of life, but we never finish the whole thing. It's the Lamb's book of life. It's the lamb's life. It's the lamb's kind of life. It is his life. But it's, it's lamb kind of life that needs to be the lamb in you, not copiers of lamb kind. I hope I'm being clear here. Because it, it's a kind. Uh, it's after a manner, but we're not seeking to be after a manner. We're seeking Christ. <clears throat> All right. Um, did somebody just shoot at me? Yeah. Yeah, anything that's a copy is a copy. And if one church copies Jesus and then the next generation comes along, they're a copy, and then they make people a copy after that. What does a copy look like that's been copied, you know, a bunch of different times? It fades, and pretty soon you lose the picture. <clears throat> All right, so the new covenant involves union with God, right? So in that union, Jesus is the divine nature, and we're the containers. See, when we say union, I mean, a branch is a container. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. A vessel is a container. Container, the, you know, you just keep going through the scriptures. The, a body, the body of Christ is a container. All of them meant to contain him as the life, or can I say it, him as the nature. Because the life is the nature, isn't it? I mean, isn't life the, the nature of the thing? And in God's case, for sure it is. <clears throat> All right, so he's what is spiritual. And, and in that relationship where we're in union with him, he's what's spiritual in that new relationship. He's spiritual. 
Okay. Now, there's more. Um, he, is, he is what is spiritual. Uh, a new relationship with Jesus means a new relationship. Okay. So here we go. Old covenant, new covenant. We say, I'm, I, I believe in the new covenant. I'm part of the new covenant relationship. And what that means to me is I have a new relationship with Jesus. Okay, well, how do we define that? People define that a million different ways. And the, and the most common way we define that I have a relationship with Jesus is I got saved, and now I ask him to bless my money, or I ask him to keep me out of trouble, or to get me out of trouble. Or I, That's not the relationship. Union with Christ is a completely different thing. Now he's the, he's the nature. I, see, I, I thought I wrote down a couple of things here. Oh, yeah. A new relationship with Jesus means a new relationship with how we approach God's commands. A new relationship with Jesus has totally changed how I approach God's commands. Now when God gives me a command, I know that can only be fulfilled by the life of Christ in me. And even if I could do it, I don't want to do it because God wants Christ in me. God wants Christ out of the body. Can I get amen? It's his body. You ought, ought to get Christ out of it. <laughs> All right. So it changes how we, we approach those commands. It's telling, instead of getting under condemnation or becoming a Pharisee and trying to do it and prove everybody else is messed up, I go, you know what? I have a, I'm, in, I'm in covenant, a new covenant with God, and that covenant is everything by Christ now. I'm the vessel. I'm not the, the primary person in this relationship. I'm just a vessel of his life. And I, I, want to I want to please the Father by being a priest. We're all priests. And I want to offer Christ back to the Father. Now, the new relationship with Jesus means a new relationship with <clears throat> how we gain virtues. The Bible says, be ye holy as I am holy. He didn't say, do holy stuff. He said, be holy because I am. And if you're one with me, you will. Be. We go, oh, I haven't been very holy. Well, even if you've been acting holy, if it's not him, big deal. Jesus got more upset with the Pharisees, folks. You know, these prostitutes and all these people hanging out with Jesus. And the, and the Pharisees are going, Pfft. He can't be of God. Look at that. He can't be of God. If he knew what kind of woman that was that's kissing his feet and wiping them with her tears and stuff, well, he'd be indignant of the whole thing. Jesus turns and says, I'm indignant with you. Just quoting the Bible, people. <laughs> Just quoting the Bible. Now we know how Jesus got crucified. <laughs> okay, but because it is a union and not just an agreement. Oh, it is? Oh, it's a union, not an agreement. The new covenant is actually a union, not just an agreement. It's a partaking of Christ, not just an agreement with Christ. Okay, I agree with that. Okay. You know, I mean, that's, that was the old covenant. You know, God says, uh, you know, he comes, uh, Moses comes down from the hill. He's got the Ten Commandments. They said, just tell us what to do and we'll do it. That never worked. What did I just say? I said an agreement with God is not going to work. Agreeing with God is not going to work. You're going to need something more powerful. You're going to need Christ in you. And you're going to need to be in Christ. So, so the agreement, you know, get out of the covenant being some sort of agreement. It's a blood covenant. Well, you know, you didn't shed your blood. He shed, you know what I mean? We cut our wrists and we, and we did that as kids, you know. We're blood brothers, you know. We both cut our wrists and hold it together and, you know, well, we did. I remember doing that as a kid. It was big back when we were younger, some of us, anyway, that grew up in orphanages, <laughs> you know. Okay, we're blood brothers. Well, not really. Your blood's still O positive and yours is B. We just, we're smear brothers or something. I don't know. We, we didn't, you know, there, we didn't change kind. We just made an agreement. Isn't that what we're talking about? 
We've got to get out of the concept of the new covenant just being in agreement with God and, and find this, this whole heart thing that he says, I'm looking for one after my kind. You've got to see God after Adam and Eve left kind and what it did to him instead of what it did to us. And you see it all the way through. I mean, what is all the prophets? They're pleading. The Lord is pleading through them. Come back to me. Return to me. You know, he's not saying, I want to come to church. <laughs> he's not saying that. You know what I mean? Come back to the temple. You know, they were already going to the temple. He said, I hate your sacrifices because they're not after my kind. Your spirit is wrong. Everything about this is wrong. All right, therefore, our personal relationship with God is not simply fraternal, but participatory. Fraternal meaning, hey, you know, glad handing, that's an old Texas saying, or, you know, you know, bumping elbows. Yeah, yeah, we're just all friends. We're just all, you know, uh, in this fraternity, not college fraternity, but this fraternity of this brotherhood as, as you know, we're uh, serving God in this manner and this sort of thing. And Jesus, yeah, you know, when I first got saved, you know, we were hippie Jesus freaks. And, you know, uh, we always talked about Jesus as our, you know, best friend. You know, well, he's our life. You know, if he's our best friend, and he's a one kind and I'm his friend, but I'm another kind, I'm gonna get knots on my head constantly. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't, but I'm just saying, hey, you know, we're friends based on that of kind. All right, so that's fraternal, but participatory is that we're participating with him in this. That doesn't mean that we participate in church service. Can you imagine somebody reading most of that as, well, I have to be involved. Well, okay, there's nothing there. You know what? You don't have to worry about involvement with his life in you. You'll, life finds a way. You can dam it up all, the, all you want. It'll keep going, you know, coming out here and wanting to, you know, it's just Jesus. He's just, he just good and he's beautiful. <clears throat> all right, so... The law we now adhere unto is the law of Christ's nature. We must experience a personal union with Jesus, Jesus that releases his nature through us. We don't need, we do not need a personal relationship with Jesus that doesn't release his nature through us. I don't, and this is my belief, we'll get into that in redemption. I don't believe there is such a thing. I believe, and you saw it in reconciliation. It's undeniable in what we've shared in reconciliation. Well, guess what? It'll be undeniable in uh, redemption and resurrection and, you know, like we're really going to cover all that. But, <laughs> but that's why I'm reading fast and skipping stuff here. Uh, the results, um, ends when, when we go by his nature, the result ends in good in two different ways. Spiritual good to us because Christ lives in us. And there's no greater spiritual good, not ministry, not healing, not blessing, than to literally have the life of Christ in you by his life, nature, spirit, by his essence. And then there's also moral good to others, meaning you treat others better than you would if it was you. <laughs> love God and love your neighbor as yourself. All ALL, the commandments are fulfilled in these two. It's Christ in you. That's the result of it. And you in Christ. Christ in you and you in Christ. It does that. It does that. Because it honors the Lord the most when you let him live in you, not when you're just waving your hands. And again, I love praise and worship, but I'm just saying that's so far compared to being a an earthen vessel of his life being a branch that lets his fruit pop out of you. Whoo! The vine's just going, yeah! You know? 
I mean, I'll just end with this, but I mean, think about it. Um, uh, really, a vine doesn't have any base like a tree trunk. I mean, it's just got, it's really made up of branches. Jesus says, I am the vine. That's, that's all of us letting his life come out. In other words, he's not going, you know, I'm the, the main star. Now, he is. He is, isn't he? But that little picture there helps us to see that with him, what would please his heart more would not be just every, everybody seen coming out of him, but him seen coming out of us as branches. That would be powerful to him. He said it so. He, he could have said it any way that he wanted. He could have set it up any way, but he set it up with that. Father, we just thank you for your spirit. Thank you for these classes. May they not be classes. May they be times of sitting at your feet and longing after you and not being offended or uh, embarrassed or feeling guilty. But may we just drop all of that right now and we say, Lord, I love you and I just want you. I don't have time for all of this guilt or all of these things I would go through. I don't have time for it. My time is to be given to seek you, to put you first. So Lord, Open our hearts and then open our eyes. Open our hearts. Let the veil be taken off of our heart first, and then it'll be off of our eyes. For when the veil is, when the heart turns to the Lord, that means the veil is off of it. Then the veil is rent. First the heart, then the eyes. The eyes of our understanding. You want our heart, and if you have our heart, you'll open our eyes. Help us, Lord, to set the priorities as you have set them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, folks. Love you. God bless you. We're dismissed.